Our next speaker is a Palatine resident, uh, Mark Mangino. Dr. Mangino received his PhD in Physiology and Chemistry from Michigan State University in 1985. He is now a professor, professor of Surgery, Anesthesiology, Emergency Medicine, and Physiology and Biophysics at Virginia Commonwealth University at the MCV campus. He is also Director of the Virginia Initiative for Organ Donation and Organ Preservation. He is internationally recognized as a leader in organ preservation and trans transplantation research and development. Additionally, he studied climate science and global warming issues for many years. Last year, he was appointed by Dr. Fred Singer to be president of the Central Virginia Chapter of Science and Engineers for Energy and Environment. Professor Singer is a world-renowned atmospheric physicist who has studied climatology and global warming for decades and is the founder of C. Virginia. C. Virginia is a nonprofit organization of Virginia's working scientists and engineers, most non-climatologists, that educate the public and elected officials on a scientific basis of environmental and energy policies. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Mark Mangino. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. This is good to be to work and we'll be all set. This is going to be hard for you to read back there. Yeah, yeah it's tough with the lights. There's a need to shut the lights up. I mean, the drapes are too bright. Oh, too bright. Yeah. 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 That's pretty good. Well, yeah, that's good. You can see it. Another government project. Okay, today we're going to project. It's done. We're going to shift gears a little bit. And I'm not a, a, a policy person. I am a scientist and a professor, so I'm going to give a little bit of a lecture um, on the basics of, of global warming. Yeah, I can do that. What I want to do then is uh, turn on. How's that? <laughs> what I want to do is to, um, within the time that I have, is to basically uh, systematically disassemble the, uh, the the reasoning and behind you know, what's called anthropogenic CO2 induced global warming which is what we hear a lot about in the news today. So, um, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit. I'm sorry, you can't read any of that, can you? Uh, uh, yeah, I wonder if we moved it over here. Would that be it? Right on the side. <laughs> Imagine a lawyer came up for that. Does it work? So, the, the global warming argument says that we have small amounts of man-made CO2 that cause large changes in the Earth's temperature. The temperature causes changes in the climate, and that these changes will cause bad things to happen to you and me. We've all heard the Al Gore story. Uh, but you have to keep your eyes on the ball, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're arguing about global temperatures, glaciers, ice melts, polar bears, and hurricane intensities is fun, but we only need to determine if small amounts of man-made CO2 cause any of this. It's really the important question. So, the, the fact that 
The Earth is warming does not prove that CO2 emissions cause it. The fact that a polar bear died in a storm does not prove that CO2 caused it. <laughs> the fact that the ice is melted in the Arctic does not prove that man-made CO2 emissions caused it. The fact that a Hurricane Katrina caused drought occurred does not mean that CO2 emissions caused it. These are the important questions that we have to look at. Well, what makes the globe warm? Very simply, we have a, an Earth budget, which means that the, the energy regime comes from the sun, and then the Earth liberates energy out as a form of radiation. And there's an equilibrium that causes the Earth to maintain a steady state temperature. What is the greenhouse effect? We've well, heard about this, and this is quite simply <coughs> solar radiation coming down, okay, warms everything up on the, on the surface of the Earth, and everything gets warm, and then it re radiates long wave radiation back into space. Now, there are parts of the atmosphere that are called greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases are capable of reabsorbing some of that energy and remitting it back down the Earth. When that happens, it causes the Earth to warm. That is, in fact, the greenhouse effect. That's what we're talking about. Now, what are the greenhouse gases? Well, I bet you haven't heard a lot about this. Everybody tells you that CO2 is, in fact, the, uh, the, the warmest thing, or the, the greatest of, of the gases. In fact, water vapor occupies 95% of the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is very small, it's a very small section. Okay, right here, only 3.6% of the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere is due to carbon dioxide. But not all the carbon dioxide is man-made. Okay, so when we look look at the small section, 3.6% that's, that's in the atmosphere of carbon dioxide, out of that, only 3.2% is man-made. And now we're interested in the man-made effect. So when you multiply those two together, you get this number, 0.12% of the greenhouse effect in our atmosphere is due to man-made carbon dioxide. Another way to look at that is 99.8% is not man-made or is natural. So, if you have to make a boogeyman out of a greenhouse gas, you have an elephant in the room, which is 99.8%, which is natural, and you have a fly in the room, which represents the 0.12%. Why are they picking on the mosquito or the fly? I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. So if you get anything out of this talk today, you want to remember that only 0.12% of the entire greenhouse effect in the atmosphere is due to man-made carbon dioxide. So in order for such a small amount of CO2 to have such a huge effect on temperature, we must have a, there must be a great sensitivity of the plant to CO2. This is the only way the models will work. Okay? This, in fact, is the CO2 sensitivity is the crux of the global warming debate among scientists. When global warming scientists get together, okay, they talk about uh, CO2 sensitivity. In other words, how much, how much carbon dioxide will cause how much of, a, of an increase in warming. Now, when we talk about uh, global warming, we talk about other things. But this is basically the scientific crux of, of the matter. And it's only the only way they can come up with global warming to the degree that they do is if they pretend or show in their models that there's very, very high sensitivity to CO2 um, in the planet. So let's look at a little bit of uh, some data here. We're going to talk about global warming. We want to look at some temperatures. This is a, a reconstruction of temperatures from 500 million years ago, a long time ago, right? And you want to focus on this point right here, which is where we're at. This is temperature, okay? And this is carbon dioxide levels. You can see the point of this, of this graph is to show that the temperature that we're experiencing right now is not unique. You can see that during many points in time in history, the temperature has been much warmer than it is today. Furthermore, this, the carbon dioxide levels in, a, in the area of the Paleozoic era, called the late Ordovician, was 14 times higher than it is today. Now, what happened during that era? The temperature was not only much warmer than it was today, but they actually experienced an ice age, okay? So we have an ice age where, where the, the, the Earth actually plunged into a glaciation